Okay, so this is our last lecture for this semester. I'm going to give you a short introduction to transformers. Okay, if you recall, when we took up inductance, inductance is a winding, essentially a winding, that if you make a current pass through this winding, there's going to be a magnetic field that will develop okay, around the winding. No? The magnetic field will be concentrated in the area of the axis of the winding, and then uh, it will go out into the into the atmosphere, no, and then come back in. Okay, but most of the most of the magnetic field will be here, no, in the axis. Now we learned, no, when we studied inductance, that if this flux, no, the magnetic field is described by a flux. If this flux is changing with time, there's going to be a voltage developed across the winding, no? and the flux changes with time. If your current changes with time, no? because if your current changes with time, then the magnetic field that it produces will also change with time. So this is Faraday's law is equal to nd phi dt. No? And then n times phi is called your inductance L. Okay? And uh, this becomes equal to uh, E is equal to L di dt. So this is the equation that you're more familiar with at this point. Now let's consider this situation. No? Um, feel excuse me, no, just give me a, a few seconds and then. Okay, sorry about that. No, now let's. <coughs> Let's consider this situation. <clears throat> so let's say I have a coil, you know, this coil, let me call it coil one, uh, having N1 turns. And what I do is I wind the coil around what we call a core. So this is what we call now a core. The core is usually made of what we call a low reluctance material. So iron or ferrite, this is what you call a low reluctance material. Reluctance is to magnetic field as resistance is to current. In other words, the lower the reluctance, the easier it is for a magnetic field to flow. If I now apply a voltage across the coil, I'm going to get a current that will flow in the, in the coil. And this current is going to produce a magnetic field. Now, because there is this low reluctance material, the magnetic field will stay confined to this material little of the magnetic field will leak out. No? So um, if, if there were no uh, core, we call it a core, may magnetic field na magli leak out dito, no? magli leak out dito. But because this is a low reluctance material, all of the magnetic field will now stay confined here. Okay. So if the magnetic flux, no? itong flux is varying with time, you're going to get a voltage that is induced across the coil, across coil one. Okay, now if I put another coil here, okay, so let me call this coil two, that coil will experience the same magnetic field. No? So if this magnetic field is changing with time, I will also have a voltage induced across coil two. So I have two voltages now, E1. E1 is due to what we call self uh, inductance, no? and E2 is what is due to what we call mutual inductance. In other words, this current, no, this current I1, produces a changing magnetic field that is felt by this coil. And because this coil is feeling a changing magnetic field, there will be a there will be a voltage induced across it. No? That's what we call mutual inductance. Okay. Any questions? So just, just give me a thumbs up if, if you're following, okay? Now, if nothing is connected to coil two, so let, let's say we leave this uh, to be an open circuit, nothing is connected, connected to coil two. No? The current that will flow here, we call it IEX, no? IEX, EX stands for excitation. It is the current that is needed to produce this magnetic field. 
And the lower, the lower the reluctance of the core. So as I mentioned, reluctance is the the um, no, the ability of the core to to make a magnetic field flow. No, it is like resistance to to uh, current. No, so the lower the reluctance of the core, the smaller the value of IEX. Uleta, no? Walang nakakabit dito. Kung walang nakakabit dito, this will be very small. I1 will be very small because it will be just what is needed to make the flux flow through the core. As a matter of fact, no? if this is a perfect core, of course, there's no such thing as a perfect core. No? If this is a perfect core, meaning the reluctance is equal to zero, then IEX will actually be equal to zero and no current will flow here. There will be no current I1 flowing. But of course, like I said, there's no such thing as a perfect core. Okay, from Faraday's law, I know that E1 is equal to N1, that's the number of turns here, multiplied by dT by dT, no? the rate of change of flux with time. Now this is experiencing this coil is experiencing the same flux. No? So under ideal conditions, E2 will be N2 multiplied by the same dT by dt. If I get the ratio of E1 to E2, no? if I divide E1 by E2, itong dT by dt will cancel. And what will be left is E1 over E2 is equal to N1 over N2, which we sometimes refer to as A. And this is called the transformers turns ratio. So what you see here now is actually what we call a transformer. And in an ideal transformer, the ratio of the voltage in coil one to the voltage in coil two will be equal to the ratio of the number of turns of coil one as compared to coil two. E1 over E2 is equal to N1 over N2. Okay, what will happen if I now connect something here? No? Connect something to E2 no? or to coil two. Ano mangyayari? Because I have because I have a voltage induced here, expect current now to flow in coil two. Kanina walang nakakabit, walang current sa coil two. Ngayon magkakabit ako ng I'll call it a load. Magkakaroon ako ng current ngayon dito sa coil two. This will cause a current I2 to flow. The effect of uh, I2 flowing is to create a flux, to create a magnetic field that will oppose phi. No? If I follow the right-hand rule for I2, no? if I follow the right-hand rule for I2, it's going, to create, it's going to create a magnetic field that is upward along this axis. No? Kakalabani niya tong phi. No? So, siyempre, ang, ang magiging tendency is for phi to be equal to, or to approach zero, no? Because there is a magnetic flux created by I2, which is opposing, which is opposing the original flux, no? But the flux has to, a flux has to flow, no? So, because I2 is flowing, I1 will increase, ito lalaki, so that, the flux will continue to flow. In other words, okay, I1, okay, I said here, I1 will increase to, to sustain the flow of flux. I1 will no, no longer consist of just the magnetizing current. I1 will now have two components. One is to magnetize the core, and the other is to support the flow of current in the load. That is the second component of I1. And like I said, under ideal conditions, the first component is almost equal to zero. No? So the I1 here that will flow will almost, will almost totally, almost totally consist of what is needed to cause I2 here to flow. Okay, you're going to you're going to be introduced to the concept of uh, magnetomotive force when you take up magnetic circuits at some time in the future. But uh, magnetomotive force is to magnetic circuits as electromotive force or voltage is to um, electric circuits. No? 
So MMF in a magnet, magnetic circuit is analogous to EMF or voltage in an electric circuit. And the N MMF at N1, at coil one, must be balanced by the MMF at N2. So this is analogous to Kirchhoff's voltage law. In Kirchhoff's voltage law, E1 must be equal to E2 no? in an electric circuit. No? Oh, sorry, this is not an electric circuit. In Kirchhoff's voltage law, if I have an electric circuit, no? uh, the sum of the voltages around that electric circuit must be equal to zero. No? Now, this is a magnetic circuit. So the, 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 uh, the magnetomotive force here must be balanced by the magnetomotive force here. No? So that is N1 I1 is equal to N2 I2. Or if I get the ratio of I1 over I2, that is going to be N2 over N1 or one over the turns ratio. So in summary, a basic transformer has two windings sharing a common core. So we saw that earlier. The windings have N1 and N2 turns respectively. The turns ratio is N1 is to N2 or A is to 1. Now we call N1 the primary. This is where the source connects. And we call N2 the secondary. This is where the load connects. In many instances, there is no designated primary or secondary because the construction of your transformer is symmetrical. I can choose to put my source here or I can choose to put my source here. So in, in many cases, we don't, we don't say primary or secondary. We just say uh, the N1 side and the N2 side, no? or the sometimes we say the high voltage side and the low voltage side. No? In an ideal transformer, so this is what I just derived uh, a few minutes ago. If I get the ratio of E1 to E2, that will be equal to N1 over N2 or A. And if I get the ratio of I1 to I2, that will be N2 over N1 or 1 over A. E1 and E2 will be in phase. Okay? They will be in phase because N1 over N2 is a real number. So if N1 over N2 is a real number, then E1 must be in phase with E2. And so will I1 and I2 be in phase. In other words, whatever angle of I1, phase angle of I1, that will also be the phase angle of I2. Now E1 and I1, or E2 and I2, are not necessarily in phase. So if I go back to this, this and this, will not necessarily be in phase, no? Neither will this or this, no? So we learned from the last modules that the relationship between E2 and I2 will depend on this load. If the load is purely resistive, E2 and I2 will be in phase. If the load is inductive, I2 will lag E2. If the load is capacitive, I2 will lead E2. So you already should know that by now. And E1 and I1 will just follow E2 and I2. Okay, so that's what I'm saying here in this bullet, no? E1 and I1 will be in phase. Uh, E1 and E2 will be in phase. I1 and I2 will be in phase. But E1 and I1, uh, the phase difference will depend on the load. And these relationships here, it is applied in general to the voltage E1 and E2. But if E1 and E2 was expressed or were expressed in terms of amplitudes, this will still apply. If E1 and E2 were, were expressed in terms of RMS values, this will apply. If E1 and E2 were expressed in terms of phasors, this will apply. So itong, itong ratio to, pwedeng gamitin sa time domain expression, pwedeng gamitin sa amplitude, Pwedeng gamitin sa RMS value, pwedeng gamitin sa phasor quantities. So, any questions so far? Any questions?
Okay, so very important. These are very important concepts that uh, you should try to try as much as possible to understand. Yeah. Okay, so let let let's do a little bit of review whether uh, you understood what I'm um, what I just taught you. No, so let's say you purchase a one hundred volt appliance from Japan. So, so Japan and voltage is hundred volts. Unfortunately, ang Meralco will only supply 230 volts sa bahay ninyo, no? So to convert from 230 volts to 100 volts, you decide to want you decide to wind your own transformer. So gagawa ka ng sarili mong transformer. So you buy a core and then you buy a long long magnet wire, no? Now if you decide that you will have 1000 turns in your secondary, okay? The secondary is where your load is connected. How many turns are required in the primary, no? So can you can you give me an answer, both of you? I just want to see whether you understood what we discussed. If you have your calculators, you should be able to punch that into your calculators. So if you have 1,000 turns in the secondary, how many turns are required in the primary? Albert or Kokoy or, or, or Carl, sorry. Okay, I have an answer from Albert. Carl, any answer? Or would you like to pass on this one? Okay, um, I think we lost Carl, no? Okay, so the answer of Albert is correct, no? I, I need 2,300 turns. No? So, that, so that if I have 100 volts in my 1,000 turn side, I'm going to have 230 volts in my um, in my supply side. No? So I, I'm going to need 2,300 turns. No? <clears throat> okay, second question. The current drawn by the appliance should not exceed 10 amperes. No? So I wish to place a fuse in series with the primary to protect both the transformer and the appliance. So what should the ampere rating of the fuse be? No? So I have I have essentially my transformer. This is my transformer. Okay. So this is my primary. So ito na sa 230 volts. No? And then this is my secondary. So ito, this is my appliance. So here I have 110 volts. So 110 volts. Ang, ang gusto ko mangyari, maglalagay ako ng fuse dito. No? I'm going to put a, a fuse here. No? So what will this fuse do? If the current exceeds the fuse rating, this fuse is going to blow or is going to trip, no? depending on what type of fuse it, it is. And it will now isolate my, my supply from my transformer and the load. No? So... My appliance, sabi rito, should not exceed 10 amperes. So what should be the rating of this fuse? Again, no? um, can, you, can you try solving what the rating of that fuse should be? I think Albert is uh, a little bit more in step. No, Carl, uh, please give it a try. What should be the rating of this fuse? So itong, itong current dito should not exceed 10 amperes. Um, take a, um, yeah, while, while, while Albert is uh, thinking about it, no, um, there's a question from, from Carl. No? Ah, sorry. 100 volts. No? Not, not 110 volts. 100 volts. <laughs> sorry. I was thinking 110, 110 to 230. Okay. So, ano, ano, yung, ano yung dapat na rating nitong fuse na to? Albert or Carl? Any any attempt? Uh, 23, Paul. Uh, 23? 
Um, I think that's not right, ano? <laughs> no. Uh, point one. Okay. So ganito yan, ano? This is this is I one, okay, and this is I two. No? So my 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 I two. I two max no is equal to ten amperes no so I one I one max over I two max okay is n two over n one no you remember this relationship no. I1 over I2 is N2 over N1. So I2 max over I1 max is N2 over N1. No? So I can compute for I1 max, I1 max. Okay, this is I2 max. Okay, N2 we already said is 1000 turns. And N1 we already computed that's 2300 turns. No? So if you if you get the answer of that, okay, it's going to be equal to this one, four point three amperes. That's that's ten multiplied by one thousand divided by two thousand three hundred. Any question? So that that is what the rating of this Q should be. No? in other words, if if the current here exceeds exceeds uh, 4.3 amperes, this fuse is going to blow. So very simple question, no? but uh, something with a very practical use, no? um, if you think about it. Okay, let's, let's proceed. No? Okay, transformer ratings. So these are typically found on a nameplate mounted on the transformer. No? Pag, kapag bumili ka ng transformer, no matter how small the transformer is, Somewhere in the transformer, may makikita kang tinatawag na nating nameplate. No? Um, and in that nameplate, uh, well, these are, these are for industrial transformers. In that nameplate, you're going to see a volt ampere rating. So this is the maximum allowable volt amperes or KVA. So what is volt amperes? That is your apparent power. So ito volt amperes, this is your S. S, no? S is apparent power. Okay, not not uh, complex power, no. Complex power, if if you recall, complex power, merong merong uh, vector signs at us, no. Okay, and then your rated voltages. So this these are the maximum voltages that you can apply to the windings, no. Usually uh, they say a high voltage side and a low voltage side, no. So so these are the voltages for which the transformer was designed, no. But just because um, for example, if, if a winding, if the rated voltage is um, 200 volts, that does not mean you should apply 200 volts. No, You can apply something lower than that. Normally, you won't apply something higher, but you can apply something lower. And then you have your rated currents. These are the maximum allowable currents consistent with the volt ampere and voltage ratings. So usually, for example, your rated current will be your VA rating divided by your voltage rating. And then you will also see losses. No? In industrial transformers, you're going to see losses. Okay. Now, in, in, in this particular course, in triple E123, we will be dealing only with ideal transformers. So in ideal transformers, we assume that your losses are zero. And we also assume that our excitation current is zero. Remember earlier, I described yung tinatawag natin excitation current. So we're also going to assume that our excitation current is zero. <clears throat> so this is what a, a rating plate looks like. No? Okay. So you know, it, it shows here the, the KVA, the volts, the, no, the volts at no load, both at the high voltage side and the low voltage side. So this is typically the maximum voltages that you can apply. And then this is the current, the maximum current at the high voltage side and the low voltage side. No? Unfortunately, this is a three-phase transformer. So if you try to compute for current using the formula um, 
um, I is equal to S over V, it's not going to work because iba yung formula pag preface. Ano? Uh, what I wanted to do here was to show you what a, what a nameplate looks like. Okay, so um, again, no, um, very simple problems just, to, just for you to understand how you can make use of the nameplate rating. So let's say you have a single phase transformer no, with the following nameplate data. You have a apparent power rating of 50 kVA, and then the high voltage side voltage rating is 7,620 volts, and the low voltage side voltage rating is 230 volts, rather. No? So determine the high voltage side and low voltage side currents if operating at rated kVA with 230 volts applied to the low voltage side. No? So this is, this is very straightforward. No? If it is operating at rated kVA, that means S, S is equal to 50 kVA. No? And uh, S is equal to V times I, right? So at low voltage side, no? 230 volts applied to the low voltage side, I, let, let's just put that at LV, is just now 50,000 divided by 230, no? um, which will give me, give me, you know, I'll, I'll have to use my calculator. That will give me 217.4 amperes. No? What about the high voltage side at High voltage side. I high voltage will now be 50,000. Now, if I have 230 volts applied at the low voltage side, then naturally my high voltage high voltage will be 7620. So this is going to be 7620, and that will just give me. Six point six amperes. So you can see that at the high voltage side, a very much smaller current will flow. No? At the low voltage side, you have a very much larger current that will will flow. No? So letter A is a very straightforward question. No? So let's complicate things a bit. No. Determine the high voltage side and low voltage side currents if operating at half, half its rated KVA. This time I have 7,500 volts applied to the high voltage side. Okay, applied to the high voltage side. So S is equal to one half of 50. So this is 25 KVA. Okay, 25 kVA. So what will be my high voltage side? Okay, what will be my high voltage side current? No? I, high voltage will be S over, uh, my high voltage side voltage is 7,500. So what will this be? This will be, 25,000 divided by 7,500, this will give me 3.33 amperes. Okay. Now what will be my low voltage side current? No? My low voltage side current, okay, will be my high voltage side current multiplied by this turns ratio, 7620 divided by 230 no? multiplied by 7620 over 230. No? In effect, this is it all. This is like your N2, and this is like your N1. No? Remember, I1 over I2 is equal to N2 over N1. So I'm going to get one hundred ten. 
0.4, um, 110.4 amperes. Okay, another way, no? Another way, my high voltage high current, so another way, uh, rather my low voltage high current is equal to S over, okay, what is my low voltage side voltage? My low voltage side voltage will be 7,500, okay, multiplied by 7620. Uh, so, no, uh, sorry. No. Um, multiplied by 230 over 7620. No. Okay. Multiplied by 230 over 7620. No. This is my, this is my, uh, I'm computing for V2. So, this is V1. No, V1, uh, no, I'm computing for V1 over V2 is equal to N1 over N2. No? So I'm computing for V1, this is V2, this is N1, and this is N2. No? So this is going to be equal to 25,000 over 7,500 times 230 over 762. Zero. And if you do that, sorry, sorry, no, male, male, um, balik tad, yeah, pardon, no. Let, let's let's do it step by step, no? Para hindi na, na lilito, no? Para hindi na kalito, no? Okay. Another way, no? So if if uh, the high voltage side, HV side voltage is equal to seven thousand five hundred. Okay. Your low voltage side. The low voltage side will be 7,500 multiplied by 230 all over 7620. Ito, this, effect, this effectively is N1 and this is N2. No? This is V1 and this is V2. No? So V1, V2, this is N1 and this is N2. So I'm going to get... Sorry about the confusion. No? Two hundred twenty-six point four volts. No, and then I low voltage is now going to be equal to S, which is equal to twenty-five thousand over two hundred twenty-six point four. No? which will give me what I got earlier, 110.4 amperes. So sorry about that. No? So anyway, do you get the concept? No. Any question? Uh, Carl, nakakahabul ka pa ba? Anyway, if, if you're having a hard time following, I, I think you'll probably have to... Um, uh, review the recording no, or, or take a look at the take a look at the um, yeah no um, that's right no um, if this is the rated high voltage side voltage and this is the rated low voltage side voltage then that, that just means that the turns ratio the turns ratio is proportional to this over is equal to this over this. No? So 7620 over 230 is equal to N1 over N2. Okay. Okay, so those are the answers. Okay, so this, these were the answers we got earlier. 
Okay, so let me continue. No? Ideal two winding transformer. So we're talking now about ideal transformers. So ideal transformers, first of all, this is zero resistance. In other words, there's no voltage drop across the, the coil due to resistance. No leakage flux. All of the flux produced by uh, the current flowing through the source winding is felt by the uh, by the load winding. No? So all the current, all the flux produced at the primary is felt by the secondary. No heat loss in the core, which is impossible. If you have a transformer, even if it's not loaded, but hinawakan mo yung transformer, mararamdaman mo, there's some warmth, no? so there's some heat loss. And then uh, permeability, well, permeability, actually, I should have said re reluctance. Ano? Permeability is the reciprocal of uh, reluctance. In the same way, conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. That's why the exciting current is zero. So this is your ideal to winding transformer. This is the circuit representation of a transformer. Okay, This is, in general, this implies that there is an iron core. Not dot markings, no? Dot markings are provided so that you know the relative polarity of the primary and secondary voltages, no? So if these are your dot markings, then if your primary is plus on top, minus below, no? Then your secondary, it will also be plus on top, minus below. In other words, the relative polarity at the dots should be equal, no? So if at the dot it's positive here, at this dot it should also be positive here. And the, the dot marking depends on the, the direction in which the coils are wound. No? Just to give you an idea, so if this is my core, so here I wound it in the clockwise manner. No? So dito, pag nag, nag ako dyan, it's in the clockwise manner. Here I wound it in the counterclockwise manner, here. Then these are going to be my dot markings. And that has something to do with the direction the, the of the flux generated in the core if you inject a current here or if you inject a current here. No? If I inject a current here, my flux will flow this way. If I inject a current here, my flux will also will flow this opposite. And therefore, this and this are your, uh, are your dot markings. No? If my if my Winding is both clockwise, so it's clockwise. No, this is clockwise. This is also clockwise. Then when when uh, when this is when the dot here is at its positive, this dot here will be at its positive. So that's that's the that's the reason why we have dot markings in transformers. Any question with regard to the dot markings? Again, if, if, if you're okay, just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Okay, let's, let's try to analyze circuits now with transformers. No? So this is our ideal, let's say this is our ideal to winding transformer. This is going to be the equivalent circuit. Let's assume that we're working in the phasor domain. Now, <clears throat> transformers, you cannot apply DC voltages to transformers. I cannot apply a DC voltage here. Can either of you tell me why? Bakit hindi pwedeng DC? We mentioned that earlier. Albert, bakit hindi pwedeng DC? Or Carl, why can't we apply DC voltages? Any, any, any idea? Um, hindi ako sure po, pero probably because, maybe because of one, maybe the load, because it's more of impedance rather than just resistance. Um, not, not exactly, no? You, you remember what I said earlier, no? For, for a voltage to be induced, what has to be changing with time? You remember? A Kasi, yeah, that's right, no? For a voltage to be induced, this current has to be changing with time, no? Because if this current is not changing with time, the flux will not be changing with time. And according to Faraday's law, you only will have a voltage induced if your flux is changing with time. 
that flux changing with time is created by this current changing with time. Meaning to say, if I put the DC voltage here, this will not change with time. My flux will be a static flux. I will have no voltage here, and I will also have no voltage here. So normally, transformers are only used with AC. Only used with AC. So let's, let's assume we're work, working in the phasor domain. No, we're working in the phasor domain. So this is going to be my equivalent circuit where my, where my uh, um, voltages and currents are expressed in terms of phasors and my load is expressed in terms of an impedance. <coughs> now, remember what I said? about uh, uh, a transformer, the turns ratio applies to phasor quantities. No? So E1, the phasor voltage at the primary over the phasor voltage at the secondary, that will be equal to N1 over N2. No? And then the phasor current at the primary over the phasor current at the secondary, that will be equal to N2 over N1. So assuming the transformer is ideal, you have these two relationships. If I solve for E1 and E2, no? so from here, E1 is N1 over N2, N1 over N2 multiplied by E2. Ito, ililipat ko lang dito sa kabila. No? Itong E2, ililipat ko lang dito sa taas. And then I1 is N2 over N1 multiplied by I2, no? so that's this two. <coughs> Let Z equivalent be the equivalent impedance seen by the source. In other words, this is your source. No? What if I represent this whole thing, no? this whole thing, I want to represent by an impedance Z EQ. In other words, itong source, ang nakikita itong impedance, itong impedance representing this block, which is equal to ZEQ. No? ZEQ is just V of S divided by I1. Right? If I get the ratio of V of S over I1, that will be this impedance ZEQ. No? But V of S is equal to E1. So this is essentially E1 over I1. No? Now I substitute, dito sa E1 at saka I1 na to, I substitute these values. So I substitute this for E1 and I substitute this for I1. <coughs> and I'm going to get, so here I have N1 over N2, here I have N2 over N1. I'm going to end up with N1 over N2 squared. No? And if I take a look, E2 here, is equal to VL. No? E2 is equal to, sorry about this. No? E2 is equal to VL. No? So E2 over I2 is just VL over I2, but VL over I2 is really just Z of L. The ratio of my load voltage to my load current is equal to my load impedance. So Z equivalent, that is the the equivalent impedance seen by this particular source is just my turns ratio squared multiplied by my load impedance. Okay, in other words, this is equivalent to this. What we have done, you know, we say, you no. Know, uh, Z equivalent, this is ZL. No, this is this is how we say it, no? This is ZL referred to the to the to the source to the source side. No? Or referred to the primary. No? ZL referred to the source side or or referred to the primary, no? Referred to the primary.
So if I know what 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 are we saying here? No, if I know my turns ratio, n one over n two, it's now very easy for me to compute i one. No, by just getting the equivalent impedance seen by v of s, and i one now will just be equal to v of s divided by z e q. Here, no, I say the load impedance has been referred from the secondary to the primary. So example, no? transformer has a turns ratio of 1,000 is to 100. No? So 1,000 at the primary, 100 at the secondary. The, the RMS value of the source voltage is 220 volts. So I know the RMS value of this. I know what my load impedance is. So what is the RMS value of my source current? <clears throat> so my, my solution, okay, so refer this of L to the primary. So let me call that J of L prime. That is just going to be equal to N1 over N2 squared multiplied by j of L, no? N1 over N2 is 1,000 over 100, so that's 10, no? So this is going to be 10 squared multiplied by four plus J3, or this is just 400 plus J300. Okay. The RMS value of my source is equal to 220, no? Now what I can do, I don't have any phase angles here, no? But what I can do if I if I have no idea of any phase angles, no, I can make any phase or quantity here my reference phase or no. So making V of S my reference phase or okay, then V of S is going to be 220 at an angle zero degrees. You knew Ibig Sabihin, I'm making it my reference phasor. So when I make it my reference phasor, that means all other phasor quantities will be with, with respect to VCS as my reference because VCS is what, VS rather, VS is what I assign to be at angle zero. And, and therefore, I of S is just now going to be V of S divided by JL prime. No? Because my when I computed for JL prime, my equivalent circuit now is I just have a V of, v of S, no? V of S connected to JL prime. No? And this is just equal to I of S. That is my equivalent circuit. So this is just going to be 220 at an angle zero degrees divided by 400 plus J 300. And that is equal to, um, I have it somewhere, no? Um, so that, you know. So I don't have to compute it anymore or you might be faster at computing it than I am. No? Uh, okay, here. So this is equal to 0 0.44 at an angle minus 36.87 degrees amperes. So I RMS, no, I S RMS, actually we can just use this notation, no? I S, no? this is uh, the RMS value of I S is equal to 0 0.44 amperes. No? Remember in our RMS uh, phasor transformation, our magnitudes are RMS values. Okay. Any question? Any question? Okay. So you know. 0.44 RMS, no? So this, no? IS is an accepted notation for the magnitude of the phasor ISO-S. No? 
Let's say if I just if I just say is without without the without the bar on top, then that implies the RMS value of the phase or i sub s with, with the bar on top. Okay, let let me proceed further. No. Okay, so I already derived this earlier. Or yeah, we already know this from earlier. Now I want to multiply e1 by the conjugate of i1. You know, so let's do that. You know, um, so if I multiply e1 by the conjugate of i1, okay, I'm going to get uh, e1 i1 conjugate. I have to multiply now this also by the conjugate of i1. No. Now, from, from here, from here, the conjugate of I1 is equal to N2 over N1 multiplied by the conjugate of I2. That is from this. Because if I get the conjugate of I1, that means I make the angle negative, then the angle of this would also have to be made negative for the, for the equality to, to stay the same. So this is my expression for the conjugate of I1. So yun yung dinalagay ko rito, no? So this is actually equal to I1 conjugate, I1 conjugate. Or I'm going to get E1 I1 conjugate is equal to E2 I2 conjugate because this will cancel with this. So ang matitira lang is E2 I2 conjugate. Okay. What is this an expression of? What is this an expression of? <coughs> Carl, I don't want to put you on a spot. No, if you don't know the answer, it's okay. But can you can you recall what is this an expression of e one i one conjugate? Hindi ako sure po pero I I parang feeling ko um it's like it's like the or parang from the transformer thing except instead of using v it's like you use e instead. Hmm. Not exactly. Not exactly. No. How about how about you, Albert? Um, I mean, E1, I1 conjugate. It's it's a type of power that we studied. Is it the complex power? Po? Exactly. No. Um, I, I think, Carl, you, you better review your notes. No? Um, I, I know that there's been a lot of terms that have been that have been uh, floated recently, no, but try try to review your notes. So this is complex power, no? So this is this is the complex power associated with your primary, and this is the complex power associated with your secondary. No? In other words, on the primary side, E1 I1 conjugate no, is P1 plus JQ1. And E2 I2 conjugate is P2 plus JQ2. So what, the, what does this mean? No? Ano yung significance nito? No? The power and reactive power that is delivered by the source will all go to the load. In other words, ito, tagapasa lang, pass through lang, kung, kung baga, no? ito just passes it through. Kung ano man yung, yung power na tinatanggap dito sa primary, yun din yung power no, na linalabas dun sa secondary. Walang inaakin yung transformer, no? Walang, walang, wala siyang kinukuhang power at reactive power para sa kanya. Lahat ng natatanggap niya, pinapasa lang niya. So that is, that is the significance of this equation. Of course, that is an ideal transformer. No? So the power and reactive power delivered by the source are the power and reactive power absor are received by the load. No? The transformer does not absorb any real or reactive power. So let's let's try to let's try to apply that. No, so here find the power and reactive power supplied by the source. No, the transformer turns ratio is two is to one. No? in other words, n n one over n two is two is to one. And then I'm given the value of uh, z of l. Okay, this is what connects the secondary to my load. Usually, this represents a wire. No. And this is what connects my source to my primary. Usually, this also represents a, a wire. No? Okay. So there are there are uh, 
many methods to to solve this. You know? um, so what what we can do? Okay, so let's let's call this one solution. Okay, let's refer Z2 and ZL and sorry, ZL to the primary. Refer Z2 and ZL to the primary. No? So Z2 prime, okay, is equal to N1 over N2 squared multiplied by Z2. N1 over N2 is two is to one. So this is going to be four multiplied by 0 0.3 plus J 0 0.4. So this is going to be 1.2 plus J 1.6 ohms. On the other hand, JL prime, again, that is N1 over N2 squared multiplied by JL. So this is four. Okay, eight plus J six. Okay, so this is going to be thirty two plus J twenty four ohms. And now my equivalent circuit. My equivalent circuit. I'm going to have V of S. Okay, J one. Okay. J2 prime and then JL prime. Okay. J1, J2 prime, and JL prime. No? Um, J total. So J total, let's let's assume that that's the total impedance seen by the source. No? Let's call this J total. It's just Z1 plus Z2 prime plus ZL prime. So I have that again somewhere. Sorry about this. Uh, sorry, no. Wala pala, no? So anyway, Z, Z total is uh, Z1 plus Z2 prime plus uh, Z3 prime. So that's that's a 1.6 plus 1.2 plus 32. No? So that is uh, 34.8 plus 1.2 plus 1.6 plus 24. No? So this is plus J. 26.8, huh? 26.8, let me just check. Huh? I don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, 34.8 and 26.8, huh? of course this is ohms. Okay, so what is the value of I of S? Sorry, um, I of S, let me continue here. No, I of S is just V of S over Z total. Okay, that I have the solution. No, this is uh, 5.01 at an angle of minus 37.6 degrees. This is amperes. And I can now get S of S, so this is complex power, which is just V of S multiplied by I of S conjugate. V of S multiplied by I of S conjugate. So that is how I get the power and reactive power that is delivered by my load. No? And if I do this, okay, you just plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 873 watts plus J, 672 bar, bars. No? 
So this is the power and this is the reactive power. that is delivered by my source. Okay. Any questions? Power and reactive power delivered by your source. There's another, uh, yeah. Um, so tama dito, no? My answer, the answer is here, no? Okay, there's, there's another way of solving this, no? Um, because ito, no? this is ice of S. No? So I know that ice of S, sorry. Sometimes my PowerPoint has a mind of its own. No? Okay, I know that, so I already computed for ice of S, no? this is here. No? 5.01 at an angle of uh, 37.6 degrees. No. The RMS value of ice of S is 5.01 amperes. So if I know the RMS value of ice of S, I can get the power delivered by the source, no? The power delivered by the source, P source, is just ice of S squared R1 plus ice of S squared R2 plus ice of S squared is R, R, R2 prime plus ice of S squared RL prime. So I just, I just get the power delivered to 1.6 plus the power delivered to 1.2 plus the power delivered to 32. No? So this is uh, 5.01 squared times 1.6 plus 5.01 squared times 1.2 plus 5.01 squared times 32. No? And that should give me the, the same answer. No? Then I can, I can also do that for Q of S. No? is i of s squared x of one plus i of s squared x of two prime plus i of x s squared x of l prime. So that's the power delivered, the reactive power delivered to 1.2 plus the reactive power delivered to 1.6 plus the reactive power delivered to 24. So you can try that alternate solution also. Okay, um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take one or two more examples no? because we don't have any more time. So here, no? the load L consumes one kilowatt at 0.85 power factor lag. What are the real and reactive power delivered by the source? Assume the transformers are ideal. <coughs> okay, so I, I, have, uh, I have a load here supplied by two transformers. No? I have a source. First, I have one transformer here. Then I have another transformer here. No? This is very typical in a distribution system. Um, bakit ganito yung distribution system? No? For example, ito yung, ito yung uh, generator ko. Sabihin natin na sa ano to. Let's say this is in uh, Batangas. No? One, of the, uh, one of the big plants in Batangas. Before I distributed that to Metro Manila, I have a transformer that makes the voltage here very high. The voltage here will be in the 100,000 volts. And then when it gets back to my house, I have another transformer that will bring the voltage back down to, let's say, 230 volts. No, that's, that's very typical in, um, <coughs> in uh, power systems. And the reason for that is when the voltage is high, the current is low. So pag, pag matas na matas yung voltage rito, mababa yung current. No? That's because the current is equal to N2 over N1. No? So the higher the voltage, the lower the current. And you want the current to be low so that I squared times R and I squared times X is very small. So your losses are smaller. So that's why, that's why all distribution by Meralco is done using AC and using transformers. No? But anyway, that's, that's uh, beside the point. No? So I know the power and uh, 
I know the power and the power factor of the load. So I want to know what the real and reactive power of my delivered by my source is. No? And what I can do is I can use the power triangle no, to determine the real and reactive power delivered by my load. No? So if my real power delivered by my load is one kilowatt, it's operating at 0.85 power factor lag. What is Q of L? No? Q of L is PL tangent of the R cosine of 0.85. That is the value of uh, Qs of L. And uh, that is going to be equal to, so I'll just give you the answer, 619.7 bars. Ano yung sinabi ko kanina? Kung ano man yung power at reactive power generated dito, ipapass on lang nitong transformer na to to the secondary which will again be passed on by this transformer to the to the load. No? So actually, ito na yung sagot. No? My PS is equal to 1,000, and my Qs of S is equal to 619.7. It does not matter what the it does not matter what this voltage is. For example, no, I don't have to know this voltage. I don't have to know my turns ratios here. If these are ideal transformers, kung ano man yung binibigay nito, yun ang tatanggapin nito. Okay? So I hope you understand that. Okay, um, I don't have any more time. Ano? So what, what I'll do is I'll just present some solution outlines to you. And then you can try to solve the problem yourself and notice that I have answers here. So you can just check the answers on your own. You know? So for example, in this example, the load consumes one kilowatt at 0.9 power factor lead. So that's here, no? One kilowatt, 0.9 power factor lead supplied through a transformer with turns ratio of 1,050 turns at the source side, 110 turns at the load side. So that's N1 over N2. This is adjusted so that V of L is 220 volts RMS. So here you're just asked to find the RMS value of the source current. RMS value of the source current. In, 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 uh, actually, this circuit diagram does not show phasors. No? What I'm showing here are all RMS values. Kung phasor siya, may arrow sa taas. Ano? So these are, all, these are all RMS values. Now, the reason why I did that is because you can solve this problem without using any phasors. You can solve the problem without using any phasors. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here. No? I can use the power triangle to determine I of L. Okay, how do I do that? No? Um, so again, no? um, let's do that very quickly. What is my power triangle? Okay, this is uh, P, which is E of L, which is equal to 1,000 watts. No? Well, I don't know Q of L. This is uh, the R cosine of 0 0.9. What is S? No? S is equal to P of L over the cosine of 0.9. The cosine of the R cosine of 0.9, which is 0.9, sorry. Cosine of the R cosine of 0.9, which is 0.9. No? So this is over 0.9, okay? So that's going to be 1,000 divided by 0.9. So this is 1111.11 1, 1, 1 volt amperes. But what is S? S is equal to V of L times I of L. No? These are RMS values. These are not phasors. Meaning to say, pwede ko nang computing yung I of L. Okay? I know that V of L is 220. So this is 1111.11 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 divided by 220. And right away, 
I get the value 5.05 amperes. Okay, so if this is 5.05, what is is of S? Is of S is just 5.05 uh, multiplied by uh, N2 over N1. No? N2 is 110 divided by N1, which is 1050. And I'm going to get I of S is just 0 0.53 amperes. So I was able to solve the problem. I didn't use any phasors. Of course, if you wanted to use phasors, it's not a problem. No? But you actually can, can solve it without using any phasors. And in the in the okay, it's the same the same scenario, except that what if now this source is very far from this transformer, so that in the zero yung linyang to, no? the wire here does not have a zero impedance. So siningitan ko ng zs of l. No? So again, the problem the problem now is the the problem now no is determine the RMS value of the source voltage, because the RMS value of the source current here will be the same as the previous example, no? because uh, this I of L will be the same as this I of L. It's the same triangle. It's the same transformer. So this I of S will be the same value as this I of S. But now, because of this Z of L, E1 is not going to be equal to V of S. Now, normally, when you solve this, you're going to do a phasor, a phasor KVL here. But you can, you can do this without using any uh, phasor arithmetic. No? Okay, so the solution is, Use the power triangle to the, determine the, the apparent power delivered by the source. Okay. Uh, you can and you and you can do that because you can determine the power and the reactive power supplied by the source by just adding the power and reactive power supplied to this load to the power and reactive power that is uh, supplied to the load here no so meron meron kanang p at saka q dito may makokompute kang p at saka q dito kasi alam mo yung is of s you just add the two you're going to get the total p and q delivered by this no and then you can apply your power triangle to get the apparent power and then you divide it by is of s and you're going to get v of s so the answer is 2105 so try to compute that on your own Okay, so I, I know that um, that was quite fast. So it was, like I said, it's an introduction to transformers. Actually, um, in previous triple E123, there were some other topics that we discussed sa transformers na hindi na namin diniscuss ngayon kasi itong last week of classes, we only had one day, no? which is uh, Tuesday. Well, tayo, we only have one day, which is Tuesday, no? And even the other classes have only I have only probably up to tomorrow. So tinigil na namin yung coverage hanggang dito, no? But better check also the official notes, no? Baka may dinagdag si si uh, um, si Doc Pedraza dun sa uh, material, ano? So but um, yeah. Um, any questions? Are there any questions? Okay, so I'll I'll uh, I'll post the recording of this session and also the notes that I presented in uh, in uh, Uble, oh, no, rather in YouTube and in Uble as I usually do. Okay, so that's all for now, and uh, I hope not to see you again for Triple E one two three. Um, um, if you have any questions with regard to any of the subject matter for the for the third exam or 
Um, hopefully, you won't have to take the comprehensive exam, but even for the comprehensive exam, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. No? Um, I'm, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. So good luck in your last exam, and uh, I hope you have a good result for uh, triple E123. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul. Okay, thank you.